attention capture by an ocular singleton, a hallmark of the saliency map in V1. We have seen that a salient location can be due to a unique orientation, a unique color, or a unique motion direction. The responsible V1 mechanisms are the intracortical interactions between V1 neurons to give isofeature suppression, which includes isoorientation suppression, isocolor suppression, and isomotion direction suppression. We can ask, can we predict from the V1 saliency hypothesis another very salient behavior due to another feature dimension x being a prediction implies that saliency by such a feature dimension x was unknown before now it's very apparent that things that are highly salient as in these three examples are also highly distinctive perceptually yeah such as a distinct orientation color a distinct motion direction so it turns out that because different features in this feature dimension X are indistinctive or indistinguishable perceptually from each other, their saliency effects had not been noticed previously. This visual input is made by showing two different images to the two different eyes. All these surrounding bars are shown only to the left eye and at this location, one bar is shown only to the right eye. We can have such a display by using, for example, stereo glasses used for watching a 3D movie. This is how image locations correspond. The perceived image is like a superposition of these two monocular images. Therefore, we cannot tell which input bar is shown to which eye. In particular, this bar which is uniquely shown to the right eye, appears almost indistinguishable from the other bars. However, we predict that this bar is salient since it evokes a higher V1 response. The feature dimension X is then the eye of origin of visual inputs. Its feature values can be the left eye or the right eye. This input is salient because it has a unique feature value the right eye. The responsible V1 mechanism to make it salient is the ISA eye of origin suppression. This means V1 neurons tuned to the same eye of origin suppress each other so that the V1 neuron responding to this unique bar escapes such a suppression and therefore gives a relatively higher response. Such ISA eye of origin suppression is indeed present in V1. However, the saliency mechanism is not present in cortical areas V2 or above, downstream from V1 along the visual pathway, because these higher brain areas have mostly binocular cells, so their neural responses are insensitive to whether a visual input is to the left eye or right eye. They are blind to eye of origin of visual inputs. This is likely why perceptually this bar is not distinctive However, in V1, many neurons are monocular, tuned to the eye of origin of visual inputs. Therefore, saliency by uniqueness in eye of origin is a hallmark of the saliency map in V1. Now, since this unique eye of origin singleton is not distinctive, then the question is how to measure its saliency by the reaction time to find it as a search target if observers cannot tell which bar is the target of their search. We can instead ask observers to search for something they can see, in this case a uniquely oriented bar, and all the bars are actually shown to the left eye only, and the target is easy to find since it's salient by escaping the ISA orientation suppression and evokes the highest V1 response to this image. Yeah. And so if one of the background bar is moved to the right eye, the perceived image stays unchanged. Now this bar is unique in eye of origin and escapes the ISA eye of origin suppression. To this visual input, there are two highly salient locations in the saliency map to compete for attention. 
One is perceptually distinctive and the other is perceptually not distinctive. And Vish predicts that this indistinctive location is salient and could distract the task of finding this, this search target, the uniquely oriented bar. For example, the gaze could be distracted to look at this non-target first before going towards the search target. And this is indeed observed behaviorally, and this distraction slows down the search and therefore prolongs the reaction time for the search task. Therefore, saliency by this ocular singleton can be measured by its distraction to the ongoing search task. For this perceived image, one can make a different visual input like this one. Okay, still the same perceived image. Now the orientation singleton is no longer in the left eye, but in the right eye. So it's also an ocular singleton. However, same perception. Yeah, And this perceived image can also be evoked by this third kind of input, where all bars are in the left eye. Yeah, And for this input, the saliency map by visual responses has two salient locations, one for the orientation singleton and one for the ocular singleton. For this input, the saliency map has just only one very highly salient location. By the ocular orientation double feature singleton, it should be even more salient than this one. Yeah, And for this input, the saliency map also has just one salient location, and it's for the orientation singleton, and it should be less salient than this one. However, relatively more salient than this one, simply because it doesn't have a competitor for attention. This one has a competitor to compete for attention with it. Yeah. Relative to this baseline condition, this one has the shortest reaction time to find the orientation target, and this one has the longest reaction time simply because this location distracts attention or gaze from the search task. And the reaction time difference between these two conditions gives another measure of the saliency by the unique eye of origin feature. Now we can do another experiment in which the uniquely oriented bar in each of these monocular images, and therefore also in this fused image is replaced by another bar that's parallel to all the other bars. Yeah. Now all bars in this perceived image are parallel to each other. Now we can ask observers if they can tell whether any of these bars is in a different eye from the other bars. This means can they tell the difference between these two situations when there's one bar in the other eye from this situation when all bars are in the same eye. And indeed, the observers often cannot tell. This confirmed that they're indeed blind to the eye of origin of visual inputs. This is particularly so when different bars have different brightnesses or luminances. However, the saliency effect by the ocular singletons uh, is still present regardless of whether the bars have different luminance or brightness. If our perception is not blind to which eye receives which input bar, let's say that by some magic the bars shown to the right eye have a red color, then this will be how these visual inputs should appear. We know that a unique color is very salient so it helps to guide attention to the target here, but distracts attention here for the target. So human perception is blind to eye of origin, but V1 and the saliency map is not blind to it. Of course, what we have talked about so far still hold when the inputs to the two eyes are swapped so that an item unique in the left eye is also salient. Also, saliency by an ocular singleton can be extended to saliency by ocularity in a general way. This item is an ocularity singleton. It has a stronger input from the right eye, while other items have stronger inputs from the left eye. 
and is therefore salient due to the same I of origin suppression. Compared to finding a vertical bar among horizontal bars, it's much harder to find a letter T among letter L's in this image. We can understand this since this letter T is a particular combination of a vertical bar and a horizontal bar. And neither the vertical feature nor the horizontal feature is unique in this image to make this location salient. Now, we can help to make such a search easier by putting this letter T in a different eye. In our framework of the three stages of vision, encoding, selection, and decoding, attention of selection is before the recognition. The looking, which is the attention of selection evoked here by the ocular singleton, without perceiving or recognizing the eye of origin feature, is an example of looking without seeing. Therefore, it's easy to imagine that looking can occur before seeing. 